So, I really wanted to take part in Ludum Dare 50, but I had some IRL obligations I had to be there for. So to make myself feel like I was a part of the jam, I took part in the slaughter round, where everybody takes part in knocking out bad themes. And as I was going through them, I ran into one that struck a chord. No, not that kind of chord. Get your mind out of the gutter. I was thinking rage game. And so even though I wasn't able to take part in Ludum Dare, I could at least make a game based on a theme that was in the rotation. So I went online and looked up rage games and found Markiplier. Great googly moogly, I did it! Going through games like Bennett Fadi, Pogo Stuck, <laughs> and eventually Bloody Traplands. And then like this, and then you go here, and then you do this, okay. and you climb up here, and then you go up here. Oh my god, Mark, calm down. And that's when it struck me that I've never made a platformer game, really. I made a stealth game once, with really bad art. But I've never made just a platformer game. So that settles it. I'm making a hard platformer rage game. In under 48 hours. I've done a few of these make games quick challenges, and I've learned the first thing I should do is pick my art palette. So I went to lowspec.com and went through all of their monochromatic color schemes and found this one by... and ran with it. The first day was a Sunday, where I would have the entire day to work. The rest of the week I would have to work around my work schedule, so I really had to make that day count. I started by making some blocks using the color palette so that when I put them on screen I can kind of tell where the art style is going to go. Or at least that was the plan, and then I ended up having a squirrel moment. Where I forgot what I was doing and just made actual objects with like shading and all that. Then I started putting some of the objects in scene, giving the player the platformer behavior, so I had some basic controls. And then I gave the spinning blades the back and forth movement extension, just so I could get them moving on screen. Ideally, I would be able to have all of the mechanics done today, and then spend the rest of the time making levels and art and stuff. So once I had a moving character, the next thing I had to do was make sure that they could die and respawn. Because in Bloody Traplands, the game that inspired this one, when you die, you respawn back at the beginning, and you've got to try to finish the entire level again. This was just a simple XY variable that tells the game to put you back where you were when you die. In Bloody Traplands, you can slide down walls, and I've tried that before, and I've kind of got it working properly, but eh. Because I'm on a time crunch, I just copped out and made ledges that you can grab onto. Now that I had the character moving, obstacles, and ledges to grab onto, I started tweaking the variables for the character. How fast they ran, how high they jumped, how long they sustained their jump for, and how close they had to be to the ledge to grab onto it. I was considering adding coyote time because that is one of those things that, well, it's now the standard in platformer games because of Celeste. But thankfully I didn't have to bother with that because in Bloody Traplands, they don't have anything fancy like a double jump or coyote time, they're just able to jump in midair. So you can walk straight off a cliff and jump in midair. The next thing I had to figure out was the camera. I originally had it as a fixed follow the player, and then I tried to lerp it towards the player, and then I tried to have it move to certain segments of the screen, and then I tried to zoom it in and out based on how far you were from the objective, and in the end I just decided to make it a fixed camera. Like Celeste actually, the entirety of the level will fit in the camera frame. I really encourage people to get playtesting in whenever they're making a game. So at this point, I had a player that moved, obstacles, a way to die, and so on. So I mocked up a level that would use the mechanics that the character can use, and put a couple signs around saying, get here, and challenge playtesters to get to those points without dying. And of course the response that I got from the pro gamer in our discord was, make it harder, it's too easy. Which turned out to be a running theme. But I gave the playtesters the rest of the night to play around with the prototype and tell me what needed to be fixed in the morning. The next day after work, I didn't have internet, so I couldn't get the feedback from the players. 
So instead of tweaking things, I decided to work on some new traps and level obstacles. Starting with lava, of course. And some really bad fireballs. And then I made horizontal and vertical platforms that would move. Later that evening, I used my phone data to get the feedback from the Discord. The most common consensus was that the character felt kind of Shit. And so two things make a character feel fast to play. One is actually making them fast, which I did. And then the other one is giving them a wobble and dust particles. Because even if you're not going fast, dust particles make you feel like you're going fast. So now that I had the feedback and I made the tweaks, I got rid of the mock level and started making a real one. I made a really simple exit door and put it on one side of the screen and put the player on the other and just started throwing things at the screen to make the level. As I was putting it together, I was making sure to put in points where they would actually use the mechanics of the player. So like this point here where they would drop down and have to jump midair to land on the platform to the left. And then they would have to drop down, cling onto the ledge so the moving wall didn't hit them. One piece of advice that I got was to make the level scary. Put blades and spikes and traps and things in places that the player isn't going to go and couldn't really be hurt by, but just having them there in level makes the player worry. And then when they beat the level, it feels so much more impressive. The next thing I wanted to do though was finalize the art. Before I go and make more levels, I want to make sure that the art makes sense. So I drew up a little background of like a cityscape and really didn't like it. The whole really bright background with dark characters in the foreground, I've seen it done before in games that I've played and liked the look of, but it just wasn't coming together in this game. So I ended up inverting how the art looked. So the background would be the darkest color, and then the characters and the things in the game would be that white slash light orange kind of color. And I think that looked a lot better. And so now with this level basically done, I wanted to give the game a little more juice. Part of the thing that makes rage games less rage inducing is when dying is kind of funny. So I created a particle so that when the character dies, they spin and rotate and fall down. And that paired with a dying sound effect came out really nice. With all of that done, I sent it off to the Discord again, and I was about to go to sleep for the night when I got it in my head that I should just make a better character, because it's just not very good. I've made a lot of robed character animations before. I suggest you don't look at those videos because they're really bad, but I've done it before. And so I'm pretty familiar with how textures should kind of move when a character jumps or falls or grabs onto something. And so the new character actually came out really nice. But at that point, it was pretty late, and I had to work the next day. The next day, I was really feeling the crunch. I obviously wasn't going to submit this game, but I gave myself a self-imposed deadline, so I really wanted to hit that. But an artist friend of mine pointed out that the art could be a lot better. If I just switched the flat colors to brickwork, which is pretty easy to make, it would look a ton better. And now that these stick out so much, they're really obvious. And because the character has a cloak, they kind of like drape the cloak over the cling point, And it just looks really good. I made a quick little checkpoint object with some bloom and wobble so that it stands out to the player. And made it so that when you beat the level, time slows down for a second and you get this cha-ching sound. So I had a couple hours left in the night, and I decided to make level 1. This scary level was going to be level 3, and then I would make something else for level 2. But level 1 just had to be something difficult enough to be proud that you beat it, but simple enough that you're not just dying over and over again, and you get a chance to learn the mechanics. So level 1 was pretty basic, but at the end of the level, I put a checkpoint right before the jump that you have to make, where you are supposed to learn that you can jump after you've walked off the cliff. I even put an arrow there so hopefully people would get it organically. And then I sent that version off to the playtesters and went to bed. And when I woke up, two things happened. One, 
I gave the game a name, calling it Cloak and Bad. I have no idea why. But when I asked in our Discord whether or not that was a good name, they all just said no. So with their help, the game got the name Soars and Sorcery. And then the second thing that happened that day was me doling out apologies. Because the first level wasn't actually winnable for some reason. When I tested the game, level 1 was beatable, you could make that jump. But when I sent off the build to playtesters, it wasn't. So I had a lot of people pretty upset that they couldn't beat level 1 and thought they were being stupid. But really, I am the stupid. So I fixed the jump in level 1, and I was about to make level 2, but again, I got that feedback of, the game is too easy, bro. Which is probably the worst feedback you can get for a rage game. So instead of my original level being level 3, and me making level 2, that original level is now level 2, and I was going to make a really hard level 3. I started by putting down the basic shape of the level, trying to make it as long and complicated as possible. I started by filling the level with spikes, and then some lava, and then to finish it off, a lot of saw blades. And that was it, because this was the end of the fourth night, and between my work and the playtesting, I had consumed all 48 hours. All that was left to do was put the game up on itch and see if people liked it. And I would say they did, but they also gave me a whole lot of feedback. So I will definitely be doing one more video on this game, just to fix up the things that suck. It's fun sometimes to just do stupid things for YouTube clicks. A huge thank you to my patrons. Because of them, my coffee cup is full. And I can even afford sugar. As always, the links to all the cool places that I hang out are down below, and if you decide to click on one, then I'll see you there.